Hello, I am Dr. Mike Loibo Pere. Welcome to the clinic on Aspheric TV. Today, I'm going to be talking about routine checkup and investigation. I want you to listen and pay very much attention because it's going to help you. Um, now, when we talk about routine checkup and investigation, we're trying to bring you to a point where you own your health. There's a popular saying, prevention is better than cure. This is not just an adage, it's the truth. Because when you actually prevent a disease condition, you have saved yourself lots of complications, you have saved yourself money, you have saved yourself stress, and at the long run, you're going to enjoy your life better. Now, routine investigation and checkup should be done by a trained physician or a licensed physician. The medical science currently, we are shifting our focus from curing a disease, which we will still do, but our major focus now is on how to prevent diseases because we have found that, that complications cost more to the patient, the family, and the society at large. And most of the time, when you allow a disease condition unchecked or prolong, it reduces the quality of life of an individual. So we're going to now be talking about the routine checkup. What is routine checkup? Is having yourself examined by a licensed or certified physician. I don't mean you go to the roadside, probably enter a chemist and say, I want to do a routine checkup. No, you go to a certified or licensed physician to get yourself checked. Now, when you approach a doctor and say, today I'm here not because I'm sick, I'm here because I want to do a routine checkup. That doctor will know, yes, you are ready to own your health. All right. So when you approach a doctor and say, I want to do a routine checkup and investigation, the doctor will examine you, check for, do a general examination on you. And when a doctor does a general examination on you, there are a lot of things the doctors can get to diagnose just by examining you and a lot of disease condition that you may not know that you have that can just be gotten from that examination be it a general examination or systemic examination now let's talk about general examination briefly a doctor can check your paleness that is the level of your blood can be noticed just during examination if a patient is pale, we want to find out why is the patient blood low. And we want to do some other investigations to know why is the patient blood low. It could be just dietary or a disease condition that can cause that. Then we also want to check the weight of the patient and the height to get the body mass index. The, the body mass index is actually an objective way of getting the weight of the patient to know whether the patient is underweight, normal weight, overweight or excessively overweight. And weight, if a patient is underweight, it could also be a sign or, you know, an early sign of some diseases, some cancers, even some chronic disease such as tuberculosis can cause patients to lose weight. I Sorry for saying patients, clients for now because we've not diagnose that that person has a disease. Then, also, if a patient is overweight, the weight also is a risk factor. That is, uh, excessive body weight could be a risk factor to some metabolic diseases, such as diabetes, dyslipidemia, that is popularly, you call it high cholesterol level, and also hypertension. Overweight is an high risk to these diseases. And these diseases, hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, they can be called silent killers because they may be there and the patient will not present with any symptom till they probably start affecting some vital organs in the body. Now, there are other things in general examination which when you see the doctor, he will do a detailed one on you. So I encourage all of us listening to do our routine checks at least yearly. Then also, the doctor can also go systemic. Major system that the doctor will want to check is the cardiovascular system. 
which include the pulse rate. The doctor wants to check the pulse rate. If a pulse, the pulse is actually, the pulse rate is actually telling you about, it's a pointer to the heart rate and the rhythm of the heart. If the pulse is abnormal, it could also tell, it could also be a sign or a pointer to a cardiovascular disease, that is disease with the heart that has not started manifesting with any symptom. Then also the blood pressure. When the blood pressure is high, that is hypertensive. But it's not just at a particular sitting we say, oh, this patient has hypertension. We have to check the blood pressure at least six hours apart on two occasions. And when it's consistently high, then we can say, oh, this patient is hypertensive. Normal blood pressure is about 120, 80 or less than that. But when it starts going above 120 over 80, then we'll start telling the patient, watch your diet, do some lifestyle modification. We give you advice to make sure your blood pressure stays normal or lower. When frank blood pressure, where we want to start medication, is 140 over 90. And that is, we can't know that if you don't come for your routine checkup. So that is also another pointer. What else? We could also want to check the heart sounds, the heart rate on cardiovascular examination. That, if it's abnormal, can also be a pointer to cardiovascular disease. I am sure you've heard of people just dying suddenly or some in their sleep. Sometimes, if you do uh, an, an examination on these people earlier, you could have probably had some pointers that there may be some cardiovascular disease ongoing that the person never manifested till it just came at once and it was death. So I encourage all of us to go for our routine checkup. There are other investigations or examination the doctors may want to do depending on what the examiner observed during your routine checkup. Then some routine investigations, I will just state them. We have um, full blood counts. The full blood count actually will tell you the blood level of a patient. When the blood level is low, that is, we call it anemia. Anemia could be a point of poor diet or other diseases that may be sinister, not presenting with any symptom at all. But just because we did a full blood count, we found that the blood level was low. Then we'll dig in, do more invasive, invest, not, not invasive, sorry, we'll do more investigations to find out why the anemia is there. Then we also would want to check for the white blood cell count. Some cancers could present with excessively high white blood cell counts. And we also want to do some blood tests, such as the kidney function test. Now, early, if you catch a chronic kidney disease early enough, you can reverse it. And doing a kidney function test can show us if this person has any form of chronic kidney disease is a pointer, actually. When we notice a level of creatinine, it's actually a chemical in the biochemistry. If it's high, we also want to say, okay, what's going on? Should we do a renal scan? We'll go to do a urinalysis, another investigation that can point out whether this person has a chronic kidney disease and then we'll manage promptly, trying to get the cause and treating early enough to reverse that chronic kidney disease. Also, we want to do a liver function test. Liver function test, if there's an abnormality, it could also be a pointer to some diseases such as hepatitis B, C, which most of the time will not tell you is there in the body. The patient may not present with any symptom, but it's just ongoing, progressing until it starts causing organ damage. And sometimes it may be too late to save the patient. We also want to do uric acid. It's also a chemical in the body. When the uric acid is high, it could also affect the kidney. It could cause pain. And then when we see a high uric acid level, we advise you on diet. And sometimes we also want to manage with medication so there is no complication for high uric acid level. We also uh, do other investigations such as serology. Serology is doing HIV, hepatitis B, hepatitis C screening. We do that 
I advise people that have high risk lifestyle, such as those that have multi, multiple sexual partners, to do this at least every year. Also, when we come for further episodes, we'll be talking about how to prevent some of these sexually transmitted disease by your lifestyle. But I would advise those who have multiple sexual, risky lifestyles, such as those with multiple sexual partners, to do this at least yearly. Also health workers, we also advise them to do this screening yearly because they come in contact with lots of blood and body fluids. Then for male specific, there's an antigen we call prostate specific antigen. Prostate specific antigen is actually an antigen produced by the um, prostate gland and it could be a pointer if it's high, if it's abnormal, it could be a pointer to early prostate cancer, which if we address on time could save the patient. So for male above 40 to 65, we encourage to 79 actually, we encourage you to do your prostate specific antigen yearly. Also, we have some radiological tests we encourage for women, such as the mammogram. Mammogram is an extra of the breast, early detection of breast cancer, which could be life-saving. Now, a female of 40 and above, we encourage you to do a breast mammogram yearly. When you get to 55, we also encourage you to do it too yearly, till you get to 79 or 80. Then also for the female, we also encourage pap smear. Pap smear is actually an investigation to check for the state of the cervix. The state of the cervix so we can prevent cases of cervical cancer. Now, if a female goes in, she does a pap smear, the, it could pick out early changes that is suggestive of a cancerous lesion. And when that happened, we have saved a woman from going into a stage where the cancer would have spread to cause death. Now we also encourage every, generally male and female, to do an ECG. When you are 40 and above, you can at least do an ECG yearly. What is an ECG? An ECG is electrocardiography. That is, it checks, is a graphical presentation of the activity of the heart. When you do an ECG and we find some abnormality, we want to dig in and know the state of the patient's heart and know if we are to do what we call prompt management of any form of debilitating heart disease. These are some of the tests that we do on routine investigation. The list is not exhaustive, I must say. Now there are some specific investigation that the doctor would want to do after examining you. He may notice one or two things that he wants to also check. Now before I go, I missed fasting blood sugar. Fasting blood sugar is very, very important to diagnose diabetes. When the sugar is high, it could be that the patient is diabetic. So we try to attack it and do some more investigation to confirm if such person is diabetic. We also do urinalysis in the urine. A urine could tell, a urine test could tell a lot. If there is protein in the urine, we want to check why is that, is there infection? Is um, the kidney, is the, is the kidney okay? Why is there protein in the urine? So urinalysis, doing a urine test is also good for a routine checkup and investigation. So that's um, not, I won't say all, because we are going to take questions and then when we come back next, for next episode, we'll answer those questions. So if you have questions, you could just write it on the box and then we'll answer it for the next episode. So I think with this little talk with you, my viewers, I've been able to encourage you to at least go for your yearly checkup with a certified physician or a licensed physician. So you can save yourself some complication, long-term effects, costs and stress. Thank you. All right. I remain Dr. Mike Loibo Pere.
See you next time.